I'm going to talk about a multi-center randomized control trial of DEX for bronchiolitis. Bronchiolitis is the leading cause of hospitalizations of infants in the developed world, and about a quarter of these infants receive corticosteroids. Um, a 2002 uh, RCT published in the Journal of Pediatrics um, compared DEX to placebo in infants with bronchiolitis, and um, the people who did this study of, in 2007, that was published in 2007, kind of based their part of their methodology on this study, but just made it a larger group. Um, so in that original study, there was um, a significantly larger improvement in respiratory distress in the DEX group versus placebo, as uh, measured by the respiratory assessment change score, which we're going to talk about what that is. And uh, there was a significant reduction in the number of hospitalizations in children with bronchiolitis treated with DEX versus placebo. Um, but there were a number of criticisms of that original study. It was a very small, not a very small group, but a small lower group. Um, there was uh, only 70 people. And um, the, just by chance, there was a larger proportion of infants with atopy in the um, uh, dexamethasone group, or family history of atopy, sorry, I should say, in the dexamethasone group versus the placebo group. Um, and it also included patients that were a little bit older, so patients that were in the 12 to 24 month age group. So it was thought that maybe there could have been some contamination with um, patients that were actually suffering from early asthma. So um, in 2007, um, Cornelli et al. did a double blind RCT comparing one dose of DEX, a milligram per kilogram, to one dose of uh, placebo in 600 children, 12 two to 12 months of age uh, with their first episode of wheezing in the emergency department. It was done in 20 emerges over three years and enrolled patients um, during RSV bronchiolitis season from November to April only. And their primary outcome measure was hospital admission after four hours of emergency department observation. Um, so four hours after uh, study medication administration. And their secondary outcome measures uh, were um, the RACS, um, length of hospital stay, later medical visits, or um, admissions after being discharged from the emergency department, uh, and any adverse events. So it's hard to see, but um, the RACS is composed of um, the change in the respiratory distress assessment instrument plus um, the change in respiratory rate over the four hour period. So the respiratory distress assessment instrument is a maximum number of 17 points based on um, uh, wheezing and retraction, so kind of work of breathing and wheezing. Um, and so the change in that should be hopefully negative over the course of an emergency department stay. And then uh, the change in respiratory rate should also hopefully be negative. Um, and they assigned a score for that, so it was like, minus one for five to 15% and minus two for 16 to 25%, et cetera. And they just took the sum of those two things to form the RACS. <coughs> so the inclusion criteria were uh, first episode of wheezing uh, within seven days of onset of symptoms and um, they wanted uh, people to have at least moderate uh, severity of bronchiolitis, so an RDA of at least six. Um, and then they had a bunch of exclusion criteria as well. Any prior adverse reaction to DEX, uh, known heart or lung disease, prematurity, immunosuppression, um, corticosteroid use within 14 days, any exposure to or active varicella, and uh, communication problems or infants that were uh, critically ill. Um, so. Uh, for data collection, there was data collected at multiple points. So um, at uh, study enrollment, uh, research assistants um, looked at uh, any history of eczema, family history of asthma, or other risk factors for wheezing. Um, and then um, at enrollment, one in four hours after study medication, nurses collected uh, various um, things, respiratory rate, heart rate, temperature, and um, O2 sat on room air. And then um, seven to 10 days, after completion, um, a research assistant called them and um, checked to see if they had any kind of unscheduled medical visit or hospitalization after being discharged from eMERGE or any kind of adverse reaction. Um, so it was based on attention to treat and then a secondary per protocol analysis was done on patients who actually received the study medication because not all of the patients who were randomized actually received the medication. 
Uh, and then um, hospital, admissions, hospital admissions were compared using chi-square and the RACS was compared using a t-test. So hard to see, but um, 8,686 infants were screened um, and the vast majority of them were excluded. So um, most of them were because of wheezing. Uh, previous episodes of wheezing because they had to have a, this had to be their first episode of wheezing so that was 41 percent of them and then um, uh, quite a few were also excluded because they had mild disease um, so an RDAI of less than six and then in the end 600 infants were included in the intention to treat analysis um, but uh, five of those received the wrong medication which is kind of scary um, two of them were admitted prior to receiving medication and one res one of them received the wrong dose um, so in the per-protocol analysis, there was only 592 infants. And the results, um, there was no significant difference in hospitalization in the DEX group versus the placebo group. Um, they were pretty close, minus 1.3%. And they did a subgroup analysis um, for um, the atopy kind of subgroup. Um, so for uh, patients who had risk factors for atopy, and uh, there was no significant difference in that subgroup either. Um, for the RACS, um, both groups improved during the hospitalization, but they were not significantly different from each other. So you can see that um, the RDAI of the DEX group actually decreased more significantly more than the placebo group, but when it was combined into the RACS, um, that difference was no longer significant. There was also a significant difference in heart rate and temperature in the dexamethasone group. Um, the RACS of both groups uh, improved during treatment, but they're not significantly different from each other. I mean like the hospital stay was not significantly different between the two groups. Um, <laughs> and. Uh, um, for unscheduled uh, medical visits or uh, hospitalizations after discharge within seven days, there was no significant difference um, between the two groups for that either. Um, and then for uh, adverse events, uh, there wasn't that much in terms of adverse events. Vomiting did occur after medication administration in both groups actually, and the medication wasn't redosed in the DEX group or either group. Um, pneumonia developed in three infants, but two of them were in the placebo group and none of them developed. Um, anything else significant that was noted. Um, so there was no significant difference in hospitalization or respiratory status after four hours in the emergency department in infants two to 12 months with bronchiolitis. Um, treated with <laughs> a single dose of Dex versus placebo. And there was no significant difference in duration of hospitalization, subsequent medical visits, or hospitalizations after discharge within the seven days following. Um, there was a, an antipyretic effect of DEX. Um, so there were some limitations. Uh, children with uh, possible early asthma were largely excluded, and this obviously is a group that might actually benefit from corticosteroids. Um, and then also the primary and secondary outcomes were uh, measured after four hours. It's possible there could have been a significant difference in the RACS if they had been measured after six hours or eight hours, who knows. Um, so as far as critical appraisal, um, the groups were randomized. Um, they used computerized randomization by telephone. And they were similar at the start of the trial. Uh, it's hard to see, but in, in basically everything that they measured, um, vitals at outset, initial RDAI, um, sex, age, um, whether they were RSV positive or not, um, whether there was a family history of asthma, um, history of eczema, all that sort of stuff. They were similar. So um, aside from the allocated treatments, were the groups treated equally? Um, yes, the preparations were in identical vials um, and they were labeled mm -hmm. only with the randomization number. And like I said before, if they vomited, they weren't treated again. Um, uh, were all the patients that entered the trial accounted for and analyzed to the groups in which they were randomized? Yes, for the hospitalization outcome, um, they didn't get an RACS on a proportion of both groups, 7% in the DEX group and 8% in the placebo group. Um, and they also didn't have follow-up data for 
a number of patients that I guess they just couldn't contact by telephone. And everybody, it seems, was kept blind to the treatment that was received. And the bottom line, will that help us in caring for our patients? Um, so infants with known heart or lung disease, prematurity and immunosuppression are at the highest risk for morbidity and or mortality related to RSV infection. So they're the sickest people, but they were not included in the study. So it doesn't really answer the question of um, would it be helpful for those cases. Um, also, infants with a previous episode of wheezing could have benefited from DEX um, because they might have early asthma. And none of those patients were included in the study, but they made up almost a third of the total patients screened. So there was a huge proportion of patients screened that didn't make it into this small isolated group that they actually looked at. So I don't know how realistic the study is in terms of helping us to treat people because a lot of them were not really included in the group that was studied. But the small proportion of infants who presented with a first episode of wheezing and without those certain risk factors for RSV did not benefit from DEX.